This is an 8-inch CCTV monitor from Wimaxit. All right, coming in from, well, we max it. We max it. Why max it? It's a bit like Wi-Fi, but why max? That, that old platform that they used to do. Uh, or why max IT? Might be. This, as you could have guessed by the packaging, is an LED monitor. Now, if you notice the size of this, it's a wee one as well. So this is an 8-inch CCTV monitor. And it says it's got 95% uh, sRGB with 690 nits. So it might be kind of nice and bright and things like that. But it's designed to be able to plug directly into a security camera or a Raspberry Pi or something like that. Or you can even plug it into your computer and have a second monitor if you don't want something particularly big and bulky. Costs around about, it's, well, I got it for $69.99 off of Amazon, um, but it usually retails for $79.99, but at the moment there's 13% off. So I decided I'll grab it. So, uh, yeah. Um, so on the top we get a, please kindly contact us, support at that if you need any, if you have any problems with it. That's not this monitor. That's a slightly different monitor. Uh, this one says eight inch portable monitor. It apparently looks like that. User manual in French, German, uh, Asian dialect. Uh, and it, it seems to be in English, but Oh, that's English. Right, okay. I see. Right, okay. Then what do we have in under here? Oh, it goes that way. Uh, we have a boomerang. So lots of bits. And then over this side, I'm guessing that that's the screen. And... and some packaging. We'll set that off there. Okay, so we get an HDMI cable in the box. Doesn't say if it's HDMI 1 or 2 or 17. We get a doohickey for putting it on top of something. I'm guessing this must be the way that this catches on to the stand and on the back of the screen. So it's a bit of a strange mechanism. I haven't seen that before, but maybe that's all the rage in other electronics that I've never been exposed to. That's Andy Sin. A cloth for wiping your screen clean. This appears to be some kind of sticky thing maybe to stick this down onto a, a surface stick this down onto a surface because that's your stand eh, it's not the most attractive stand in the world but oh right okay that that clips out and then clips onto that well we'll do this noise because it's <laughs> It's a pretty horrible method, but right, that should be it. Uh, and we just tighten this up. I have to take it all apart in order to do that. So it's it's not the greatest. Um, whilst it's not smooth, it does click into position. Tighten it, and it's not moving, which is good. And I guess if you open that, you can turn this at your leisure. I'd, yeah, the the bits in there. Are, are cog like as well so it clicks into position and it stays in position i don't know i think i prefer that actually than lightly tightening something and then having it just gradually slide at least this way it's going to st st stick in steps we have our three pin plug switching adapter which is 0.6 amps and stuff and it's got one of those on the end of it. And it looks like that. If you find this in a pile of stuff, 
because I've been going through a pile of stuff recently, found a load of connectors and I, or plugs, and I don't know what they go on. So that's what it looks like, even for future me, so I know that this is for that. Right. Okay, it's a lot heavier than I expected. Well, you know, actually it's 69.99, so this isn't a 30 quid monitor, so I, I would expect a certain level of quality. And I believe I've got it, actually. It's pretty much metal all around the outside. That That's rather nice. Um, and we have some screws here. Yeah. And obviously that's the size of the screen. Which compared to <laughs> a Pixel Pro. So it's a good bit bigger. And then on the bottom here, we have a, a bayonet style connection, like an aerial connection type RF or something like that. There's a USB there as well. You've got three phonos, HDMI, VGA, which is nice. So a bit of legacy support there because a lot of cameras and things will probably still have that. And then the power connector there. On this side, we have some air vents. On the top, we have some buttons, some faux screws there. That looks like an LED. Power, uh, re, re, do what it's been doing. Something else, SIM card or something, I don't know. Uh, left and right, you can get a proper click off those. And then another LED as well. I wonder if that is actually an LED. Looks like it's been pushed in. But they're not moving anywhere. I, I don't think that has been pushed in, but we'll see when we turn it on. Then here we, ah, right, <laughs> DC12, uh, VGA, HDMI, BNC, bayonet connection, isn't it? BNC is not what it stands for, bayonet connection. The L has come off a wee bit there, or the paint hasn't taken. And then this is your connector for that, which fits on there quite nicely, and tighten this up. And we is am and are what is constantly known as good. Right. Tighten that too. And we have a screen that's not easily adjustable. Well, I suppose it is. It, it's a bit graceless, but slightly more secure. I don't know. It's for every pro and con I can think of. For every pro I can think of a con for this. But we'll see, we'll see. I'm going to use this for a wee while and see how it does. Uh, we'll get her juiced up and hook her up to something with an HDMI out. Okay, so I understand why they sent this, because I've plugged that in and, you know, there's not much weight in this, so it gets pushed about depending on where the wires go. So this does move. Excuse this, I've, I've done, kind of balanced that so it doesn't, points off the lights or anything, it's, you, you're not obscured the view of, of the, the screen. Actually, I'll peel this off. Okay, so I've got my little Amiga A500 Mini. I haven't turned it on yet, so hopefully it'll work. And what I did was I plugged in the, the USB power to the Amiga from the USB that is on the monitor. Don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this this provides enough power out, but hopefully it will. Yeah, we've got a power light there. HDMI is going in. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's, there's sound as well. I hadn't actually clocked that. There is a speaker in this. You know, this looks really nice. I plugged in the mouse, I've forgotten that this doesn't work off of the mouse. Um, yeah, I need to. So the screen is a 1280 by 720 um, IPS display, which is measured at eight inches, which is, is really nice. Um, obviously it's gonna be a bit disappointing that it's not 1080p, but you know, on something like this, it looks very well. And it has that 170 degree viewing angle that it brags and, and it looks really nice. It does, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed by that. 
Um, all right, okay. The, on the buttons at the back, the left and right button here allows you to control the, the volume. And then we've got an options menu as well, which can do, uh, I'm guessing this dots. Oh, we can play about with picture mode. It's annoying that that is out <laughs> over the, the area that we're going to have color. This isn't the best thing to be testing on this. So there we have some graphics there. Vivid, soft, or no, standard, soft, and then user. Oh, that turns us off. Which is going to turn everything off. I'll turn the power off as well. But the screen is beautifully bright. Um, I imagine outdoors this would probably look quite good. At 690 nits, wasn't it? That means it'll be very visible outdoors. Um, whereas a lot of screens, you know, off your phone and things like that, where maybe they're not quite as bright, um, are, are harder to see in, in the direct sunlight. So this, this would probably be able to handle direct sunlight slightly better than your average portable screen and then i was just thinking that the the hdmi on the bottom might be nice to put a chromecast or something on there and then you can tell it what to broadcast to it and turn it on and i'm just noticing uh, it's just a bit of a hot spot you're going to unplug some things here well yes i'm just noticing that there you've got your your vesa mounts and we've got our speaker there. There's no speaker here, so it's just one mono speaker, which is put doing most of the work. Okay, so I've had to, <laughs> because my Pixel doesn't have a great video out, I reckon it doesn't, don't think it does, HDMI out, I've had to hook my main camera that I normally record on to the screen. Hello. And here it is. Now, it is worth noting that the screen is operating at 1080p, it had suggested on the documentation that it was 720, but it's 1080p. Doesn't do 4K, so I was having trouble there. So what you're looking at is a 4K image coming out from my Canon, or my Panasonic Lumix today. Uh, this is a beautiful looking rendition of the screen. Um, and it comes complete with all the various options that you need and things. And if I were to flip this over to 4K, you see it then has a problem saying invalid format. But using the screen on the camera, I can change it down to 4K H or for full HD. It says HDMI 1080p at 50 hertz, and there we have a menu from the camera. Now that's really nice, uh, especially combined with the viewing angle of this screen. Uh, no matter where you're looking at it from, you can see very clear, crisp imagery on this screen. It's gorgeous. And I would be tempted to try and find the 4K version of this to be able to plug it in and use it that way. Well, whatever it is, I can't hear you at all. Confusingly, here you can see me Recording a podcast with Ted utilizing the little screen to monitor Audacity during the recording. This allows for a little more screen space, and it's quite a nice idea to have a wee dedicated screen for such an important task whilst podcasting. I, I do think after after playing with it a while, there are somewhat um, limited things that you can do with it, and unfortunately, it all boils down to this stand. I kept thinking, oh, I could do this and this and this, but everything around the back here, this stand and the connection here, is just a pain. It doesn't fit onto standard mountings, it doesn't fit onto tripods and things like that. You can't remove this and stick it on a tripod. You have to go with the stand or not with the stand at all. You'll have to use the VESA. 
So I, I do think that there are connections out there that allow you to get a VESA connector and then stick it on the top of a tripod if you need to, or, or attach it somewhere across the room. But as it stands, this stand is what you're going to need to use, which is a real shame. Also, you have to have this power cable with you. It doesn't, it's not powered over USB type C, which is another pain. Other than that, things are excellent here. This is a gorgeous screen, absolutely gorgeous. There is very little in the way of um, light bounce off it. Uh, the, the colors are crisp and vibrant right up to the very corners. The metal construction around the outside of it is very tough and robust. It'll take a little bit of abuse. The screen itself is quite tough and hard and durable. It doesn't, you couldn't, I stuck my finger into it earlier whenever I was cleaning it and it, it just, it feels like a good screen. It's like a good layer of plastic there and you're not going to be able to push your thumb into it and, and you know, spread colours and things like that. And whilst, yes, I will agree that it, it doesn't look like it's built to be able to throw in a bag and take with you whenever you had to be, you're, you're heading off out, but for the size of it, you would like to be able to attach this into your your setup rig. I can't put this anywhere around my camera uh, because I use connectors. This isn't a standard connector that I can work with terribly well. And I've been thinking each point of this, what can I do to try to make something that will fit into this so that it can actually sit comfortably above my camera but instead it has to sit as you saw where I had it to the side of the camera and even at that so yeah um, it's it's obviously designed for photographers more so than anything else and uh, for you to be able to hook up your camera and see exactly what you're filming you do have this option of what I'm doing right now which is a Chromecast and then streaming a security camera to it but I think for $79.99, there are other options that you could possibly utilize. There's a, a bunch of connectors down the bottom, some non-standard connectors that you would get on a microphone, on a, on a portable display, a somewhat portable display, like the Bayonet um, connector there. VGA is a bit of an odd one, uh, and the composite allows you to hook up some retro games and things. So it might appeal to some who want to maybe build it into something, um, if you're if you're making a retro gaming cabinet or something like that that needs a small screen, this is an excellent screen. It it really is an excellent small screen with great viewing angles. I can't highlight that enough. It really does look good when you turn it. You can see it from every angle. I'm I'm really impressed by that. Finding somewhere to make it fit in is is a wee bit more difficult. But I I I would recommend it to anyone who is looking to pick up a small screen to assist with maybe setting up a YouTube channel or something like that or doing a bit of photography or videography. It works well enough in 1080p to be a second or third screen on your home computer if you need a small one. So if you're here looking at this because you're thinking about buying it, you need to know exactly what you're buying it for and you need to work out whether or not this power cable is something that's going to work with you and this stand is not negotiable and that's a real shame a real real shame all right if you have any questions let me know in the comments box down below hit that subscribe button and turn on them there notifications and other than that take care